In this video, I'm gonna be covering the four easiest ways that you can create and deploy your very first AI powered app using GPT-3 or other large language models. I'm gonna be taking you through four different methods that I've found and have been using recently that allow me to go from idea to prototype to putting it on a site as quickly as possible, but also are not very tech heavy and don't require you to know too much about uh, developing and coding and in general hosting these kind of applications. If you're someone with an idea, but you just don't know how to bring it to market or even create a prototype, then this is gonna be the video for you because I'm gonna make this as easy as possible for people who don't necessarily have a technical background so that you can take your idea, write your prompt, host it and start playing around with it and see it come to life before your very eyes. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be starting with the creation side of things and ending with the deployment. So I'm gonna start with showing you how you can create a API endpoint. And at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can connect the front end to that endpoint so you can start sharing it with other people. Tool number one is everyprompt.com. Every prompt is like the improved version of the open AI playground. This is where to start when you're building your first AI application. It has a number of features that the playground simply doesn't have and it's also a much nicer UI and easier to use. So here you can see it's a typical playground environment with a uh, model selector here, a stop sequence enterer, and te temperature, all your regular settings that you can play around with in the playground. Then you have your prompt entry box here. Here I've just put in a basic prompt of write me five YouTube titles for my video talking about the four best ways to create and deploy your first AI powered app. And here it comes back with the response in this black section down here. This is better than the playground for a number of reasons, but this side panel here is one of them. You can see that I can easily switch between different functions that I've created. I can open a new one and then it will save them all for me to easily go back and forth between. Here is the Stoic Mentor uh, prompt that I wrote for my previous video where I created a, an entire application using only no code tools. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link here. It's a really good video. You should definitely check it out. You may have seen in that video, one of the things about every prompt is that you can insert uh, dynamic values into your prompts, which is essentially earmarking it for later using it in your application. Now you can see here, if I enter this double curly brackets with input in between, then on the right, we get an input box here. Now, anything I enter in the input box, when I submit it, it's gonna inject it in. I miss my family, it injects it in there, and then we get the response. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. So the best thing about every prompt is that now that I've completed my prompt and I'm happy with it, I have my little dynamic parts put in, I can literally one click deploy this so that I can start interacting with this uh, programmatically through a website. Up here on the right, you can see deploy, and here it is active deployment. I can view the API documentation. And what this has done is packaged it all up and I can change the language here to Python so that we can have a play around with it. Now, so what this has done is taken this entire prompt that I wrote and then combined it with their, their backend system for handling this and created a, an API endpoint for me to contact with the post request. And then also here you can see the input value is the, the key that I put in the dynamic and the double curly braces. So I'll, all I'd need to do when I'm interacting with this is change this example value and then send it off to this, uh, this API endpoint. It also shows us the expected response. So here I can very clearly see that I'm gonna be wanting to go into the choices uh, array and then pluck out this text value. So this looks a bit codey, I know, but I'll show you in a second what it looks like when you're actually running it. Now I've hopped over to Colab just to pop this into a notebook and show you guys how this works. So here is the input value. I've changed it to my dog died and I miss him a lot. So if I submit this, it's gonna connect to that API endpoint, send off the information and get the response back. And here you go, we have the choices. Now this looks a bit complicated, but what I can do is pluck those out and get the actual text value that we want. And just like that, we have a custom API endpoint that we can send off our user input and get back a customized response from the API. The response to my dog died and I missed him a lot is the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best from Epictetus. So now that we have a way to interact with our prompt, insert the user input, what we need to do is connect this to a front end so that we can start to interact with it like a normal website or an application. So I'm gonna be covering all of that at the end of the video, so stay tuned. So the next way that you can create and deploy your very first AI application is with a tool called promptable.ai. Now at a first glance, this may look very similar to every prompt, but this is actually a little bit different and I wanna show you why. It's similar to every prompt in that I can change between different prompts on the side here. But what I wanna do here is really show you this evaluate tab. So here I have the Stoic Mentor quote from my previous video. I've played around with it a little bit and I have my input value set here. Now, if we head to the evaluate tab, we can do some very, very important testing for our prompt. It allows me to put in multiple different variables in place of that dynamic variable of input within the prompt and allows me to essentially run them all at once and then see what the output is on mass. I was blown away when I stumbled across this feature because this is such a crucial part of testing your prompts and of your AI applications. So when you create some kind of application like the Stoic Mentor video I did previously, and you seem to get the same response back quite a lot from the, from the AI, 
This kind of input and output testing is so valuable because I can start to see how often it's repeating the same thing. If you're not familiar with this prompt, I'll just quickly run you through it. I'm telling it that it's a stoic life coach and it's gonna basically, I'm a client and it's helped me with my life and it's gonna give me uh, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca quotes back in response to the thing that I'm struggling with. So essentially asking me, what am I struggling with? And I enter into that input field, what I'm struggling with. And then what it returns back is that Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus or Seneca quote that is appropriate for that situation. So I went over to ChatGPT and asked it for 10, 20 examples of things that people may be putting into this bot. So I've got some here. I'm feeling anxious and overwhelmed. I'm not sure why, having trouble dealing with da 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 da. So a whole bunch of different potential things that people may be asking it. So I've just cleared the output so you guys can see very clearly when everything comes in. So I'm gonna run this with the current prompt, which I've included a whole bunch of quotes. I'm gonna run this prompt and see what it gives us. Now just at a glance, I can already see that I'm getting the same quote repeated a few times. So this, having this kind of information about what this is spitting back on a large scale allows me to go back to my prompt and keep tweaking and keep tweaking until I'm starting to get kind of responses that I want on mass. This is why I love Promptable because I've been able to come in here and create a really good prompt, put in some dynamic values that I can sort of earmark for using in my application, head over to the evaluate tab and start to see what some uh, if we're getting similarities within the output and what kind of responses I get for a certain kind of input on mass saves me a ton of time. And then I can head over to the deploy tab and it literally deploy my application in a clip. All I need to do is hit add deployment. We'll call it video. Once again, we have an endpoint that we can interact with a get request. So we're going to take this and put it into our front end application. And I'm going to be showing you at the end of the video, how you can interact with these uh, APIs essentially that you're creating. The third way that you can create and deploy your very first AI application is with Steamship. Steamship is essentially a managed backend for AI services so that you can come in and spin up a quick application and then they'll create and host it for you so that you can interact with it programmatically from your front end. This is more versatile yet more complex than promptable in every prompt because you can essentially run uh, prompt based APIs, but you can also build Langchain apps, which is sort of the, the major focus point for people building on large language models at the moment. And I'm going to be making a video on it for you guys very soon. So stay tuned for that. You can either run these from your machine or from Replit. I'm going to use Replit. And what we can do is clone their Ripple. They give you an entire template that you can use. You simply have to clone it. And don't freak out because this looks like a lot of code. If you're not very technically inclined, uh, this is actually very basic stuff, nothing too fancy here. And if you really want some help with whipping together something like this, you can find any Python developer on Upwork for $10 an hour and he'll be able to help you out and get this done. I've just quickly spun up a quick example of an application you can make with Steamship. Now this is just a, a really gimmicky, stupid thing to do, but I thought I'd just make you guys an example. So all this app does is take in your name and your age and the response that you get back from is essentially some advice based on your age. So what I've asked it in the, in the prompt is, do you have any advice for insert age year old like me so it's going to give you back advice based on your age we go through here nothing too fancy if i run this you can see on the side here generate personalized advice with gpt3 and then i need to go into my api key let's run through an example it's taken in john his age is 35 and the advice that the ai is given back is my advice would be to continue learning and growing stay curious and find ways to charge yourself so if i go liam 22 my advice for a 22 year old like you is to make the most of your 20s. Great. The amazing thing about Steamship is that once you've written your application, you've got the functionality working. All I've needed to do is run the ship deploy command and then it gives me this right here, which allows me to interact with that endpoint that they've created within their website. Now, this is just an example on their website. It does the same functionality that I just showed you before. Now that I've deployed this, all I need to do to start interacting with this within my application is to head over to uh, README and then I can go create a new instance. I can call it YouTube example 0202 and I can create this new deployment where I can start interacting with it. And here I have a bunch of different ways that I can interact with it. I can either do it on the web here. I can use a Python script. I can use TypeScript, but most importantly, if you're gonna be doing what I'm showing you at the end of the video, you're probably gonna to wanna to use this curl. So this is gonna give you all the information of where you need to connect to the endpoint, uh, the headers, and also the data that it's expecting as well. Now I know this is a little bit more technical and, and more code involved than the previous two, but I want you to know that this is all very basic stuff. And if you have an idea, you can either come to myself, you can get in touch with me. I also do consulting that I've launched recently. So it's down there in the description and then the, uh, in the pinned comment as well. So if you have an idea and you wanna get this spun up into a prototype, you can have a chat with me, I'll tell you 
you how I do it and I can put you in touch with my developers to get it built out. But essentially you can go from idea into a basic Python script and then you take all this information here within this curl request, then you can connect it to your front end as I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. Now the fourth and final way that you can create and deploy your first AI application is with Berry AI. Now Berry is a little bit too complex for me to cover completely in this video. So if you'd like to learn more about how I've been using Berry to spin up quick chatbot examples and how other people have been using it to create entire applications, then please let me know down below and I'll make an entire video for you breaking it down step by step. Berry AI allows you to one click deploy your large language model apps. It's a super fast and easy way to spin up a live website demo that you can essentially create a chatbot interface super easy and leverage all of their hard work. They actually have an example here on their GitHub. So if we head over to that and it's telling us to ask it if it can accept international payments from India. So if I paste this in here, it's been able to give me an answer to the question I just asked it. The magic behind that little app just there is that all I've had to do is provide Barry with a link to where all that information is stored. Here you can see on screen is this doc QA pipeline. And in order to initialize one of these, all you need to do is provide your username, your open AI key, and then an input URL to the documentation or information that you want to train the model on. What Barry does is it takes all the data from the web page and then tokenizes it, basically learns about it, and then can allow you to query it in that chatbot setting. This is a super easy way to spin up a quick prototype if you have a bunch of information. Say you wanna make a customer support bot for your e-commerce store, you give it a big list of all your customer service queries, your, your uh, frequently asked questions, it's gonna learn that instantly and then you can start playing around with it and asking it questions. Now, aside from these very basic chatbot apps where you take a bit of information and teach it to the uh, chatbot so you can interact with it, Berry AI is extremely powerful because of its integration with Langchain and GPT Index. I don't have time in this video to go over all the details on these, but essentially, Langchain is a way for you to chain operations together. And this is essentially how people are building the more complex uh, large language models and AI apps at the moment. Langchain, as the name might suggest, allows you to connect a bunch of different operations together in a chain. So uh, while large language models like GPT-3 and others are great on their own for diff different tasks, Typically, you need to take and use an input, manipulate it, do certain things, and you can chain it all together with Langchain. I'm gonna be making a Langchain for Dummies video very soon because I think it is, it's very difficult to get your head around initially, but once you understand it, it is essentially how all the impressive apps are being built right now and understanding it as an entrepreneur or as someone looking to get into artificial intelligent app development uh, is something you really, really need to know. And now finally, we can get onto how we can take what we've just created with Promptable, every prompt, Steamship, et cetera, and how can we actually put that onto our website so that we can start interacting it and potentially start monetizing it. So to do this in the simplest way possible for you guys to understand, we're gonna be doing it on bubble.io. Now I'm logged in here and I'm gonna create an app called example site for video. I'm just gonna skip all that and put in a header and a form. So here we have our two elements. Now, so on this site, I'm gonna be using that advice generator based on name and age. So if you see on screen here, I've got the YouTube example generate and all the information here. So this is how I'm gonna interact with this API endpoint. So what we need to do to interact with the application that I made in Steamship is to provide it with a value for age and a value for name. Name, age, rename all of these, name label, it's super important to name your input fields and your buttons so you know what you're looking at later on. Then we're gonna get some text to display the output. Leave it like that. We can center it and because it's a rich text editor. We can center the text. Great. Okay, so what we're gonna to need to do now is head over to the plugins. We're gonna add a plugin, which is the API connector and install that. We're gonna add another API. We'll call this Steamship. And then we're going to copy this URL here, which belongs. You can expand this. Now, depending on your application, your uh, curl request here might be different, but you need to find it. You need to take note of all the uh, different aspects of it, the URL, the headers, and then you need to start putting this into the bubble backend. I'm going to start by taking the URL here and I see it's a post request. So I can set post here and paste in the URL. And I can change use as to an action instead of data. And now anything with an H tag is a header. So I'm going to start copying these over. Add a header key and value. Now I need to get my Steamship API key. And now we can see this D, which is the data. You want to copy that without the quotations. 
and now we have the name and the value. So Bubble AI Connector allows you to put in dynamic content. So here we can let it know we're gonna insert something from our website or we're planning to put something in there that is not gonna be hard coded. We can do it within these angle brackets. So I'm gonna put name here and then age here, of course. So what we can do now, we have everything written up. Now we can initialize this call by providing it some example data. So if I put my name in, my age in. Now in this case, Steamship is trying to return me some text, not JSON. So I need to be sure I've set my data type as text here. Then if I scroll down and I submit this, reinitialize the call, it's gonna give me the output from this API call right next to it. My advice for a 22 year old like you is to start thinking about your future now. So we've verified that everything is working. I'm able to connect to my Steamship application. Everything is all ready to go. Now I need to connect this API uh, setup that I've done and connect it to my front end within Bubble. Now what we need to do quickly here is just set up a state. So define another condition. This text, create a new state. Generated text. So this is gonna be a, a toggleable state that once our API call has returned and it's given us text, we can then update the state so that it updates on the web page. So I've gone this text, generated text. When this text, generated text, so that's the state, is not empty, then the element is gonna be visible. Then I'm gonna make sure that it's not visible and it's collapsed when hidden. So now we need to set up the logic for handling when this is submitted. If we go on to the button here, double click it and go start edit workflow, we can select this here, which is Steamship. So when the button is clicked, first step is to make that Steamship API call. And then after that, what we want to do is element actions, set state, and then search up submit button, which we've named on the editor, create a new custom state that is generated text state type text the element is the submit button custom state is generated text now the value all we need to do is leave it as the result of step one steamship api call we need to click on this text box here and rename it to response text or anything that you like and then we insert the dynamic data by searching up response text generated text and there we go let's center align this so it looks a bit nicer make it a little bit wider I'm sorry, I just had to go back and fix a little area here. I had the element set to the button. You actually need to set it to the response text that we've named. So response text, generated text, and the result is the result of step one, which is the API call. So just to break down this workflow, we're gonna, when the submit button is clicked, it's gonna take in the input and send it off with the API call. It's gonna update the state to uh, contain the response text, and then that's gonna apply it to the response text element within the editor. So it should all be working now if we go back and we preview this into my name and age and get advice. My advice would be to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and your future. There you have it guys. We've gone through four different ways where you can create and deploy your very first AI application. Obviously a very basic example, but you get the idea. Bubble is a very good uh, method for if you don't have much experience technically to spin up a quick prototype and you can easily host this on a domain, just buy a domain connect and then you have your first application up and ready to go. That's all for today guys. I hope you got something out of it. I've given you four different ways that you can deploy and create your first AI application. Now, I know it was very simple in the beginning and we got a bit complex with Bubble, but if there's anything that was unclear and you want me to go over it again in another video, I can definitely do that for you guys. I'm gonna be doing my Langchain video, but if you want to see more about Berry AI and how you guys can uh, create a quick chat bot for your business or for a different purpose, let me know and I'll make a video for you guys. I am here to serve you. So uh, please, if you've enjoyed the video, leave me a like, it means a ton. And if you like this kind of AI entrepreneurship focused content and these sort of loco tutorials then please hit down below subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the hit the bell so that you're notified when i release my next one that's all for the video thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one